Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and today I am joined with, um, and I, I apologize because I'm not sure how I was supposed to get your name. It's um, you, on Twitter, you're some MMA dude, and I think, but on YouTube, you're like up. I came. I, I apologize. I can't even say it right. Up, low. Uh, it's not showing up here. Um, but you are a YouTube content creator. You do uh, variety of streams. You talk about media. I think you also have like um, sometimes a focus on like sports related media. Uh, how are you today? Good. I'm I'm doing great. I'm you know, just chilling. And uh, just so I have your name right in, in my notes, like how how do you pronounce it? Like up low. I can't say. <laughs> it's all good. Uptown Lupo 420. Uptown Lupo 420. Yeah, so you could just uh you could just call me Lupo. Okay. Well, uh Lupo, um I know I gave you a very brief introduction, but I guess if you want to kind of expand on that for my audience and as well as your audience that they are listening to this. Um what do you do and what motivates the content that you create? Sure. So basically, I make videos on whatever pops into my head at the time. So I do. I have a very strong interest in sports, but I also have an interest in sharing. I like conversation. I like talking and I like spreading messages about things that I'm either passionate about or just stories that I find interesting. Most of the time, it's uh, it is sports related, but I've been trying to do different kind of blends of like science and sports. So recently I've been doing, I'm doing research for one about uh, the Phillies and the fields that they played on in the eighties, which is negatively impacting the players. That's a little, uh, that's a little teaser. But other than that, I'll do streams, games with my friends and uh, post (laughs) random shorts. So whatever, little dumb TikTok filter is uh, on my page at the time. I'll, I'll play it and I'll post a short. Twitter is an entirely different beast. So I actually started the Twitter as like a different entity in a way. Like I love MMA, so I would just post about MMA all the time. So that's where that came from. My motivation originally was just because uh, I was originally like a gaming channel primarily. And... When I would play with my friends, we would have such a great time. And I would just think to myself, damn, like, I wish in like 10 years from now, I was able to look back and like analyze and like look at the moments that made me crack out loud so much. So that was the original motivation. And now it's being able to tell stories or, or entertain. Now, I guess because, again, I talk to a lot of different content creators and with you, I can't specifically peg like how how you would like not not as an offensive thing, but like I, I can't exactly peg like how you got started into like, yeah, I mean, you talked briefly about how you started as like a gameplay channel, but um, I guess you, you're I'm, I'm basically curious about your story before like content creation and what finally made you push into like just committing to this more even on like a casual level yeah so almost so i've been doing stuff since 2016 via youtube twitch back to youtube i've gone through like two eras already so the original era back in 2016 i made youtube videos just kind of the typical gameplay stuff not a lot of editing to it just more like raw footage me just hanging out with the friends trying to be super funny and then after that i kind of got burnt out because of the pandemic it was gaming (laughs) streaming i found was a lot better instead of just like a focus a raw focus on a video where it's like a set thing where you have to be super focused Streaming was just like stream of consciousness where it was like I could play whatever, do whatever, not really have to worry about a set guideline. But even then, just like playing games every day during the pandemic, it like burned me out. You know, it almost made gaming not fun. So I stopped doing things for a solid like two or three years after that. 
and I was inspired by Moist Critical. He was like my ideal version of what I wanted to be. Just a dude that is informed about a topic, is entertaining and comedic, and is able to display that message to a wider audience. Now, um, I, I, I didn't tell you this, um, admittedly, when you first uh, messaged me about this interview, but I, I was actually kind of hesitant to bring you on because you have like a focus on like sports media. And admittedly, I'm not a big sports guy myself. Like, I'm, I'm not even really into like sports movies and like, you know, movies are like my thing. Right. Um, mm -hmm. The only the only big like sports movie I can remember really liking uh, the names eluding me. But it was like I think Blue Mountain something, or that, that might not be the name at all. But it was like um, I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you'd remember it at all if if you've even seen it. But it was like a football film, and it was about like uh, there was like a guy with like a blue pickup truck, and he had like a like a fat like a fatter friend with like a a hog that they would ride behind it. It's something like that. Um, so I, I guess. Like, as somebody who is a fan of sports, talking to somebody who isn't, like, what what is the appeal of sports, and like, why would you make it like kind of a partial focus of your channel? I believe that it's a very people centric like thing. So, one of the things that I love the most is combat sports. Teddy Atlas is a commentator. If you've watched boxing at all in the past, you know, 40 years, you'll know that that gritty voice that he has. But he explains it to a T is that at least in boxing, it doesn't matter your race, your background, your class, your your whatever. You could have been the richest person with the best trainers and the best training equipment. And you could fight a dude that was living in the dirt that had nothing. And these two people can come together and both people have a chance at winning and to me the spirit of competition just people deciding to come together to play a game using their brain as well as their bodies is something that's inspiring to me we've been entertained by all sorts of, of combat and and games since the beginning of time and I like to focus more on specific individuals than like, you know, whoever wins the NBA finals. Like I'm interested in the player on that team that won that like was cut and had to play in like the Ukrainian professional league to be able to like get back into the NBA and have a chance to contribute to that winning team. That's the things that I find the most interesting. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what, uh, the quote from the guy said that, like, you know, um, basically, like, people are on even footing with, uh, you know, in, like, combat sports. But is, is that really, like, the case? Because, I mean, like, if you're competing at, like, that high of a level, I do imagine, like, marginal advantages in terms of, like, training and stuff like that. Like, we've seen this with, like, the Olympics, right? And how, you know... Mm -hmm even if they're training like in the same sport, if they're theoretically given like the same amount of time, right? Like you usually see like, um, I, I can't remember what the, like the G1 countries, you know, like the wealthier countries basically mm -hmm. like dominating in the Olympics, even though it's supposed to be quote unquote, like, you know, per, purely from like a metric standpoint because of like these marginal, um, you know, advantages. So, I mean, do you do you think that is still the case that like you know in combat sports even like sports broadly that you know, that um it is like truly a level playing field in combat sports i i think it is uh, now you can get into other sports where you can get the the dudes that have the access to like the best trainers and all that stuff but in the Olympics specifically, it's actually Cuba that has the advantage and they win like a lot of the gold medals in boxing. Uh, well, right, in boxing, but like I'm talking like broadly in terms of like number of gold medals achieved like across all categories, you know. 
I think that money definitely has something to do with the ability that somebody can can achieve proper like training and all that. But I mean, in the at the end of the day, when you're matched up against another team or another person, it's you against them. There are there are many different situations. Like we had the battle of the sexes, where uh, the the like number two or number one female player beat the the Rodney King, whatever his name was, where it was a battle of sex and she was able to win. We've had different examples of like people that like Buster Douglas, like a, a kid that no one could have ever thought beating Mike Tyson, Iron Mike Tyson, the, the craziest dude on the planet. Upsets are a part of sport. And everybody, keep it in the combat sports, everybody does have a puncher's chance. Right. I, yeah, I get you. So, you know, even though it's like, you know, it's always like the underdog, basically, in a sense, right? Where even though they might not necessarily be favored to win, it's still always like kind of exciting to watch even like the journey of it, I guess, so to speak. Yeah. Um, But... The other thing that I, I've struggled a lot with, like, sports, and this is, I guess, going more into, like, the philosophy of it, so I, I apologize if you weren't, like, you know, if this isn't, like, necessarily your cup of tea, I don't, like, because this is, like, a broader, I think, societal thing more than anything mm -hmm. else, but the issue for me, like, for example, with combat sports, right, like, we know the research on, like, CTE and, like, brain damage and, like, how much of a toll that I could take physically on a body and it just at least to me it seems weird to like at least in my mind know that we you know support like like this as like just a pastime for us like i can understand like combat as a means of like self-defense or you know things like that but like to know that like athletes are actively harming themselves just like for fun it, it just it always just seemed weird to me yeah, it's it does it does make you scratch your head when you when you kind of look at it because you're just like oh these dudes are just banging their heads together how could this how, why would anybody want to do this I think that well the incentive is money that's that's one incentive if you can make it to the pros you can make a ridiculous amount of money and everybody kind of has uh, at least like in the back of their mind I feel like they're always thinking like there's a point where you cannot physically participate anymore. Some people push that into dangerous levels where this will affect their, their long-term health. And that's why it's important, especially nowadays, everybody is super aware and that's a, such a good thing. You got people around you, you have, you have doctors and training staff that are there to be like, hey man, you can't, you can't keep doing this or, or you got to step back or be safer or you got to retire. Uh, the importance of, of health definitely is the number one priority for a lot of these things. That's why we've seen uh, certain leagues do, do things to keep people safe. Like in the MLB, they put the gloves in so that when dudes are sliding into the bases, they don't hurt their hands. In the NFL, they have those weird little bubble helmets and the training camps. I don't know if you've seen those. It's to help stop the dudes injuring themselves, at least during the preseason in combat sports. Not every day they're smacking each other in training. They actually, now the general idea is to go super light because everybody has like a limited number of punches and kicks they can take. Right. No, I, I see what you mean. It's just, um, I don't know, it's so weird how like, because there's kind of like an arbitrary nature to like the popularity of like a lot of these sports in a sense. Like why is like MMA popular versus something like bowling and stuff like that. Um, and it's weird how we kind of like defaulted to like, you know, like I, I think, I mean, I don't know the full numbers on it, but like the two big sports right now are like MMA and like football, right? The two sports that I think would cause like the most damage to, um, its athletes but I, I guess moving away from that um part of the reason why i did want to talk to you though is that you know for somebody that does talk about like combat sports even like sports in general you seem to be 
I, I guess for the lack of a better term, like normal, you know, because <laughs> obviously with like a lot of these, um, you know, like this sports commentators and stuff like that, they tend to be like more reactionary in terms of their politics, like, you know, Joe Rogan listeners, like the type of guys that, you know, they went to like, it, they like work out in an MMA gym. So they think they're supposed to be like, you know, Roman emperors or something like that. You like, you know, the type, right? Yeah. Right. So, um, but you seem to be very kind of normal. And I guess how, how does that like, uh, influence your work in terms of, of, um, you know, being in this sphere, do you find it like difficult at all? Like, I know you had like, like a video where you're talking about, um, a lot of the backlash, a lot of uh, sports players were having in response to like pride month this year. Yeah. So for me, I think it's kind of funny because if you ask any of my friends, I'm the least knowledgeable when it comes to sports. <laughs> they, they roast me all the time for like not knowing every like roster move that that's happening. But in terms of like sports commentators, I don't know, man, I think it's, it, I might be a little bit conspiracy theorist. I think that the only reason they say the ridiculous things that they say all the time is because it's the only way to get clicks and views because the normal position is like the at the average person's position is probably the majority like opinion it's not entertaining if you watch a program and all the commentators agree with each other or they're saying things that everybody can agree with it's the clips of of Stephen a screaming about this guy will beat this guy and there's no way and you're like an idiot if you think this or that so sometimes it, it does look a little silly, but I do think at the end of the day, everybody loves the sport. And for me, at least whenever I talk about an issue, it is either, I never want to like dump directly on somebody. Like if somebody is doing something that I find distasteful, um, I think that it's important to, instead of just like, this person is an idiot. I think that it would be better to say this isn't good for the sport or this should be something we need to like look at this a different way or do this a different way so that everybody involved has a more positive aspect on on whatever we're talking about, like for for whatever is going on, because there's there is always something man. <laughs> check Twitter. There's at least 20 different things going on every day that is negative stuff that could definitely be spun a positive way. Right. Well, but I mean, that's part of the appeal of Twitter, right? Is that to spin it in the worst way possible to like generate the clicks and stuff like that, which does tie yeah. into what you're saying. Um, but I guess, uh, it's funny that you mentioned uh, like a little while back that there's like, you know, in terms of like regarding the safety of athletes, that there are a lot of like orgs or even like individual athletes that are like kind of pushing it. And the one that always comes to mind for me, and you could probably enlighten me more on this because I always hear this in like passing, like, you know, in like passing talks, but I, I, I never know if it's like being seriously considered, like, I hear that Tyson, Mike Tyson, might come back to the ring. I heard like one time, I think he was going to fight against like, I think like Jake Paul or something like that, like as an exhibition match or something like that. Like, is there any weight to that? Or am I just like hearing things, you know? I think that he participated. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure he participated in an exhibition. So an exhibition is more like not a serious thing. Most of the time it'll be for, especially like these old guys, they'll do it for like a charity. So they kind of both agree like, Hey man, we're both, we're both 50. There's no reason we got to try and kill each other right now. So they'll, they'll, you know, they'll spar, they'll, they'll do whatever. The agreement is that it's not most of the time. It's not like we're not fighting for a belt here. Mike Tyson isn't coming back into the heavyweight ranks. He is a very interesting person, though. He does. He also has a podcast and he talks about all that type of stuff. And there was an, a moment before that he started training again where he was talking about how he was like this super. He went through like 
a lot of shit. <laughs> so his mindset has has changed a lot since he was that super tough guy, super angry, aggressive guy. He got super into mushrooms and now he's like a real thought provoking and like calm individual. And he like <laughs> there were videos of him when he was getting back into training and that dude's <laughs> he started getting that old Tyson back. He started getting getting super crazy but at the end of the day even during uh, there's a clip of him actually during the weigh-in before the exhibition he's he was fighting some guy that had retired two years ago and mike tyson had retired like 15 years ago and he was joking he was like why is everybody worried about this guy i i haven't fought in 15 years this guy is retired for two everybody should be worried about me <laughs> <laughs> Right. I mean, he does look very fit. I think he's like, what, 56 now or something? Something crazy. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's it's still very impressive, like, you know, that he's able to even, like, do that, all things considered. Mm -hmm. um, God, he's just, I don't know, man. I, I just hope that, I mean, he does seem to be re enjoying his, like, retirement, but I say that in, like, quotes, you know, still doing, like, exhibition matches and stuff like that. Um... But I guess for you, um, well, as you know, this is like a channel I do mainly focus on film and television. And uh, so I guess I am curious, are you a big fan of sports movies yourself? I've, I've seen a couple of sports movies, uh, kind of like the usual, usual stuff like Rookie of the Year. Um, oh, what's the what's the one with like the kids and they play hockey? The Mighty Ducks. Yeah, there Mighty Ducks. Go. Yeah. All them. I watched a lot of the probably the popular ones in the 2000s or not the that Titans, much. which I, yes. I personally don't like really it's so sappy dude like I, I don't know maybe it's because like I never like played like high school football or anything but I know like even people mm -hmm. that don't play high school football like that movie it's just like all the sports films in like that category always seem like very like sappy Mm -hmm. which is why I think uh, I found the name of like Varsity Blues is the one I was referencing earlier. I like that mm -hmm. one more because I think it's like kind of more tongue in cheek in a way. Mm -hmm. And I think it kind of has like a more positive message at the end. Um, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Like, I guess there are like some combat sports movies. I like, I think it was, um, I can't remember the name. It was like two brothers that were like both competing and like I think it like ended with like both of them fighting, and like I think the older brother won or something. I it, I want to I I want to say it's in undisputed, but I don't think that's right. I don't know if you're if you know what I'm talking about. I, they, I'm stuck on Creed. I think Creed like the newest Creed movie. I don't know if it's his friend or like his older brother. They they would fight each other. No, no, this was yeah. MMA. It wasn't boxing. Oh, um. Like it's not the Jake Gyllenhaal one. I know it's I know it's not that one. I'm coming. I'm the only thinking of uh, here comes the boom. I'm thinking of the Kevin James one. It's the only one that comes to my mind right now. Uh, hmm. Um, I'm on a blank. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know either. I can't read. like. I want to say undisputed, but I feel like that's like mm. no. That's like the name of like the MMA like fighting game or like something like that. You know. Yeah, there's some new there's some new boxing game that's called that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I dude, I miss Fight Night. I don't know if you ever played that series. Just, dude, I, I'm sorry, as a slight tangent to this interview, but when will I ever get a chance to talk about this? But man, I miss that series so much. Fight Night Champions was my favorite. Dude, I, I, like I started on like three, and then I went like four. I never got a chance to play Champions because I oh. think it was only on 360, and you know. It was like too late by the time I I wanted to, right? You missed out on such a beautiful, a beautiful the story, really good. Like yeah, actually, I, I ironically hear that. good. Yeah, damn. Off the combat, amazing. You could play online. You could like build up a boxer from like you know sixty overall, and you can like keep fighting and go up to ninety. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I invested so much time. <laughs> But I guess speaking of like video games, which is also again like so I've seen you sometimes like I think you post like uh, not full vods. I don't know if it's like full vods, but at least like sections where you are like playing games on your stream. Um, what are you into right now? I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I'm being pretty basic right now. I I got back into Fortnite and uh, I got done that like a week ago. Kinda. Now I'm in the Warzone again. 
Oh, cool, cool. Uh, I know Call of Duty had like that weird controversy where like um, one of the Phase members, I can't remember his name, like said some homophobic shit on like Twitter, and he basically got like his operator skin removed or something like that. Yeah, it's him, the Tap Man. I think. No, well, no, he voluntarily, but it was like his friend, right? Oh, it was his Nick Merckx. There you go. Nick Merckx. There you go. Yes. Um. I don't know if you had any investment at all, at all in relation to that, or if you, or how closely you follow that scene yourself. Oh, dude, I love like like I I used to make fun of people that made fun of like or that were super invested in reality TV. I'd be like, oh, this is so dumb. But like this online stuff, oh, it's it's like my bread and butter. I love watching drama channels like bicker back and forth about all these things. It's it's a love hate for me. Um, yeah. I, I, like sometimes it can be a good way obviously to like get the know-how on a situation but then you get like what we were talking about earlier where like the more extreme takes just for the sake of like clickbait and stuff like that yeah um but i apologize this interview should be about you so um i i guess in terms of like because you have like kind of a looser nature to how you approach like uh the content that you create and things like that um how far out do you plan like what you do for the channel i have a list i got a little uh notepad right next to me of video ideas but for me i kind of write them down i look at them and when i sit down and i decide to make a video I, it's probably not the best idea but like I sit down and I just work on it and I don't stop until I'm done. Like I just made a uh, video that I posted like right before I started the pod uh, about a baseball player. And that took me like three hours. So I sat down, did it, edited it, uploaded it. So that's, <laughs> it's spur of the moment in a way, like I have it lined up, but the actual work and grind is done once I decide to to make a video, right? No, I, I see what you said. So it's like you know, you get like a general idea, but from there, you like kind of give yourself like more flexibility to adjust ideas if they work or if they don't work, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's I got it's I kind of got I'm like a little piece of clay right now where I'm I could be formed into anything like what I want for the channel. Um. I kind of want to, I don't know, I kind of want to have my cake and eat it too, where I want to make like serious videos and like entertainment, like long form videos, and then just kind of be a chill gamer streamer and like the, the nighttime and then like post these just like dumb like TikToks or shorts like randomly throughout the day. And it's kind of weird how as like a i'm trying to think of it as like a viewer where it's like there's almost three different sides to me so me personally i'm kind of figuring out right now really what my long-term plans are and like kind of what i want to do I'm not really sure yet so you do both like long-form content and like just like shorter like micro content right yeah but like um like the not like low, like thoughtless, like where it's just like, uh, I'll post like a YouTube short where it'll be me playing on like a random dumb, like TikTok filter where it's like, I'm playing tic-tac-toe or something against the unbeatable AI or something like that. And then it's just an interesting dichotomy from going to that to like talking about like the intricacies of like some, some like media or like sport topic. So I'm just curious because I don't get like too many people that necessarily do like both like in terms of like viewership or like, you know, popularity, what like what tends to work better for you, the longer content or like the shorts? The shorts actually for me, I blew up. I had a short go uh, really viral. Uh, so for me, it's always been the shorter stuff. And it's interesting because 
they it doesn't translate at all to like videos they're like two separate groups of people that'll watch like a video will be like a 30 year old dude and then like the shorts will be like a 25 year old chick that's international or something like it's co- two completely different people Right, yeah, and I've heard similar things too. Like a lot of people like experiment with shorts, and they get like a lot more traffic. But um, you know, it's not really conducive, unfortunately, to their broader content. So they don't see like wider growth unless they fully commit to being like a shorts creator. You know? Yeah. Um, but uh, since since you are like somebody that covers like sports media, I I think like I would be remiss i think is the word that i'm looking for um if i didn't ask you about like obviously this trend of like you know content or like creator clash you know content creators duking it out in like amateur matches sometimes you know for charity um i guess what is your take on that it depends for me at least like when Logan Paul does it, Logan and Jake Paul are doing it for money. Sure, they decided to enter that career. Like, to them, it's they're doing it as, like, a profession. When it's all these other guys that are doing events. Um, I know Creator Clash was for charity. I know that there's, like, that whole drama going on where it technically didn't make any money for charity. Yeah, it lost, like, 250k or so, right? Yeah, something crazy. And then... There's like three or four other ones, and I'm not too sure about those. So I, I would want them to be for some sort of charity. These guys are all super popular figures that I'm not trying to dive into people's pockets. But if you have the ability to be able to do this for charity, I think that you should. If you're doing it as a profession, like the, the Paul brothers, they're making a boatload of money doing that. So in a way, it... If people agree to, to duke it out for whatever reason, I guess I'm about it. It's I find it super funny though that like it's almost sad in a way, but like actual professional boxing doesn't get a fraction of the attention that these these guys these like YouTubers decide to have like objectively very bad boxing matches and they're gassed after twenty seconds. They, they they generate so much more eyes for the sport. Now, I don't know if that's good or bad, but like there is a um uh there's a boxer in the Philadelphia, like in the city of Philadelphia. He's a world champion in his weight class. But he's like, I don't get any respect from the city that I'm in. Nobody like cares. And he made this like long article talking about it where it's like over in Europe, they super love like boxers and they would be like, so happy to have me not to, not that he's not grateful, but like nobody recognizes him. Meanwhile, like, I don't know, insert YouTuber a and YouTuber B and everybody will be talking about it. And, and so many eyes will be on it as opposed to people that dedicated their entire lives to get like no respect. Yeah, admittedly, I'm also kind of in the same band camp where I, I don't really think it's making boxing better. I just think it's making these content creators worse. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess since you're technically a content creator, if you're ever approached for it, would you do it? I would because like, I'm out of shape, so it would give me a reason to get back in shape. I would oh. definitely do it for charity. That's what I would do. Yeah, that's fair. I ain't making no money, though. <laughs> I don't know. For me, I would just donate to charity and be like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, not for me, thanks. I like not having brain injuries. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Um, I'm not to say that they aren't doing it on the on the up and up and everything, but, you yeah. know, it's just, uh, I've seen, like, a lot of the bad stuff that can result from doing that sport, even on, like, a more casual level. Oh yeah, um, but I, I guess I, I guess I'm curious. Like, how connected are you to like the larger like sports media? Because I again, I, I I know I keep harping on it, but I know it's not necessarily like your speciality because you know you are looser with your content. But 
I guess, like, have you had any interactions with anybody else? And, like, you know, that also does, like, cover sports media? Or is it just, you know, you've been mostly a lone rider, so, so to speak? It's just me screaming into the void. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in a way, I um, I tried. It's, it's interesting because it's, like, on YouTube... It's it's its own little thing on Twitter. It's like an entirely different thing where I've I've like uh, responded to replied to like tweets of like UFC fighters and they've actually like liked my tweets and responded back. So that's like, oh, like fangirling a little bit. That's cool, but not in like a substantive way where like they're responding to like a, a video that I made or, or something like that. I I almost kind of like it, though. Because I like to think that I'm right <laughs> in a way, and to have to face that type of conversation, I think I might lose my mind. I don't know. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, I mean, for me, it's only like the closest I, I've had is uh, I have. Um, do you know the Human Centipede director Tom Six? He's he's you uh, you talk to him? I he follows me. Because I covered his films like way back in the day, although uh, given like his recent, like this recent stuff with um, the Onania Club, like his newest film, I kind of regret doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, interesting. What can you do? Yeah. Um, but I, I, so I guess, um, do you have any aspirations of like working with other like, like you know um sports media commentators like do you have any like dream collabs for yourself oh uh, definitely if i was going to make uh if i was going to make or just even broadly content, like any dream collabs i guess yeah uh pro i would like to just be able to chill with moist critical probably he would be like my my go-to dude i find him super cool and uh entertaining so to just like vibe out them in a video would be nice sports wise uh i don't know if you ever heard of it's this guy called urinating tree no i have not <laughs> he's this uh he's this angry guy from uh pittsburgh which i know kind of defeats the what i've been talking about the entire time but he's very passionate about his his sports opinions and i it's it comes it, it's comedic so it's not just like a, a spewing, just like angry opinions. It's all for, for good fun and stuff like that. So if I could collab with him, that would be great. That would be super cool. Well, before we continue with our interview, though, we have a word from today's sponsor, Salty Llama. Um, are you tired of lugging around heavy bottles of detergent dealing with the mess of measuring the right amount? Introducing Salty Llama, the ultra-concentrated, hypoallergenic, and toxins-free laundry detergent strips are revolutionizing the industry. Their eco-friendly strips are easy to use. Just toss one in with your laundry and you're good to go. With Salty Llama, you can say goodbye to harsh chemicals and hello to a cleaner, greener laundry experience. But it's not just good for the environment, it's also good for you and your family. The hypoallergenic formula is gentle on sensitive skin, making perfect for babies, kids, and adults with allergies. Don't just take my word for it. Give Salty Llama a try and see the difference for yourself. You'll be amazed at how powerful and effective the detergent strips are. Visit www.saltyllama.com and order yours today. And don't forget to use the code PODCASTPASTA at checkout for a special discount. Visit www.saltyllama.com and order yours to... I'm sorry, I'm... Wow. Why am I reading it again? Uh, again, that's saltyllama.com and use code uh, PODCASTPASTA... Um, they gave it to me in all caps, but I don't think it, I don't know if it really matters. Just in case, podcasts, pasta, all caps. Thank you again for Salty Llama for sponsoring this episode. And now back to the interview. Ah, it, it is. It, it's evening for me, so I'm, I'm not used to necessarily doing interviews um, this late. I, I apologize to oh, no, you're both good. you and my listeners, but um, <laughs> well, we'll get through this. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. uh, so. I think um, I talked about this a little bit uh, before with uh, my previous guest, uh, the Hug Dealer. But since you also kind of do stream, um, I, I guess I'm kind of curious from your perspective. You know, uh, Twitch has been having its issues in regards to like some of its TOS and some of its more recent policies. Uh, Kick has been trying to obviously expand. 
with like uh, XQC with uh, you know acquiring XQC. I don't even think it's like an exclusivity deal. I think it's just like just a stream on the platform. But um, I, I guess for you, do you are you thinking of switching platforms or you commit to um, what you're using right now, which I think is Twitch or YouTube? YouTube. YouTube, right? Yeah. So for me, I found that. So I, I have streamed on Twitch before. I streamed on Twitch for like two years. And there, for me at least, um, I kind of am like a super small kind of creator. I kind of just blew up within like the last like two months. I went from like 20 subs to like 5,500. So for me, I found that YouTube is a place where you're able to grow. Twitch, in my experience, there were a lot of days, man, where I was sitting there with zero viewers. Not that that's like a, you know, not to pity myself or anything, but it's something that you need to be a little bit established on so that you can obtain an audience that way. Because it's like, besides, you know, if you click on category X, say it's COD, there's 10,000 people streaming COD and there might be 100,000 viewers but the first three viewers eat up 9,990. <laughs> it's like 9,000 people trying to, trying to fight for nine viewers. So I kind of I like my gig right here on YouTube. Um, I've been thinking, though, personally, about putting in a little bit more effort into the infrastructure of the channel. So for me, I use Streamlabs. I'm thinking about paying for Streamlabs, like premium or whatever it is so that I can multi-stream to different platforms. So it's something that I'm considering. And depending on how it goes, I'd be open to, I'd be open to streaming on, on Kick or Twitch, but Kick is kind of right now it's new and all that type of stuff so it's going to go through its growing pains and hiccups and certain creators i know on there have a fan base that i i wouldn't want to like have watch me in a way like interact with me just because they're a little bit too wild right now but once they start to dial in their um like community not community like the communication policies and stuff I'd, i'd be open to doing it yeah sure Fair enough. Uh, personally, I, I, I've, I've, I've said this before in the previous interview, but I'm, I'm just not, I, I don't like Kick's management at all. And, you know, I, I have my own gripes with it being like mainly for like kind of uh, gambling streamers and, and stuff like that. But um, I mean, we'll, we'll just have to see how it develops, I guess, in a way. Did you see that uh, that tweet that they just put out like two days ago, where you could uh, you can opt out of the hot tub and gambling streams? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That is that is I guess that is a positive change. Um, not something I was really like worried about myself, but you know, I, I guess um, I don't know if I want to go into this. Do I want to go into this? Whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think people hyper fixate. I mean, yeah, I think a lot of people hyper fixate on like the harm of like the, um, I guess, what would you say? Like the hot tub streamers or whatever on like Twitch mm-hmm. or even like broadly on streaming service or like on streaming sites like Twitch and stuff like that. Um, you know, and that's like ruining the platform or whatever, but and I don't know, maybe you know more about this and you could like enlighten me a bit more, but at least from what I was seeing of the numbers, like it does take up like traffic, but it's not like they're like most popular category, like consistently, you know? So, I mean, I don't know. It's just, I I feel like a lot of fuss was made about it, you know, um, for like, no real reason other than like you know very like kind of reactionary guys you know fear mongering about like porn or whatever yeah i think that there are always going to be like people that try and push every sort of boundary on a on a website be any sort of like communication policy or like that type of like sexualized content so for for me in my experience like i think that 
I think that I saw it was a I think it was a Twitch thing, really, because he was like the Twitch staff and people were kind of keeping these people around that would like, oh, they would do like a nip slip when it was like a very bannable offense for like a long period of time. Like you would, you, it would that would be like a three month suspension or something. And then it's like, oh, this individual is brought back after like two days. So it'd be like that or like, I don't know the average viewers experience like how quickly a hot tub stream will show up so like how far until you see one to me um, they're not yeah i don't think that they're like super popular but it's just like this aspect of they're always like edging towards like whatever gets them banned like they always end up edging too close to the line and getting banned for something but at the same time, yeah, I think that I think that dude just like there are certain people online that that's like their bread and butter as well, where they look at that and they just like to, to shit on it because that's like their that's how they get their views. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way. Right. And well, and the thing is, too, and I've um, I've had a well, I have talked to one um VTuber, but I want to talk to like more like VTubers specifically. But like I noticed that like streaming broadly um it's just a very horny scene you know you know yeah. what i mean because i yeah. i always like on youtube i get like clips of like street like streamer like moments or whatever and um a lot of it is just like obviously i don't know maybe I, maybe i'm just ratting on myself and maybe it's like youtube like you know reading me better than i know myself but like um like I get like the you know like these very like horny conversations that streamers have with like their like audience you know um, and with particular with like V two because apparently I'm like this huge weave for some reason, <laughs> um, but yeah I don't know I, I I'd say it's like broadly the whole scene so it seems weird to specifically call out like hot tub streamers for doing it when like everyone on like Twitch kind of does it to some degree you know. Yeah. Well, outside no, of like, I don't know if you do or anything. Like, admittedly, I don't follow your streams that closely. <laughs> I'm actually a VTuber in disguise. Oh, I've been, damn. Been playing a long game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so yeah, I don't know. It, it's very, it's very, I'm, I'm very curious to see how streaming will kind of evolve because, um, I mentioned before, like, we were comparing to, like, Mixer, and, like, you know, Mixer didn't last that long after, like, doing the whole deal with, like, Ninja, I think it was. So, I mean, <laughs> maybe, like, Fade will strike the same way ty twice? Who knows? Who knows? Um, yeah, wasn't the XQC contract, if I remember correctly, like, it was topping over, like, a lot of sports contracts, if I remember correctly? I might be wrong. Yeah. So it's, it's guaranteed, I think he's guaranteed, so it's, it is almost like a sports contract where he has certain incentives. Uh, so it's like base, the minimum he can get, I believe, is 50 million. And if he streams over a certain amount of hours or a certain amount of days, he gets like millions here, millions there. And I believe the most he can make is 75 million over two or four years, which God is... damn crazy yeah um we can only uh, been me. we can only hope to be so uh successful <laughs> in our careers here i'm gonna be eating a lot more than pasta yeah um but i i guess i may, maybe we should find a middle ground because i admit i have a kind of like uh you know talk some smack about like you know combat sports or whatever but um I am big on esports, despite you know a lot of you know controversies of that scene. I do enjoy esports a lot, um, in particular for me, like fighting games. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you follow any broader esports scene, or is that just not for you? Uh, it's not for me. Uh, but I do know low tier god, but that's because he's a beam, <laughs> and that's that's about it. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I'm surprised you wouldn't like follow like the COD scene or anything like that. My friend is super. So, like, I, I'll joke with him all the time because, like, he knows that I'm not into it, but he's, like, super into it. So, I'll be like, oh, I, I pick, like, a random team. I pick, like, the best. Like, his, 
whatever his rival is. So I'm always asking like, oh, like how's like Ghost or whatever, and he'll always like joke with me about that. Hmm. But just ultimately, like not for you. Hmm. I, I think it's. It, in a way, it makes me feel bad at my pitiful displays of gaming, <laughs> watching these dudes like doing such incredible things that I kind of almost like I'm just like, yeah, I'm good. I'll, I'll do my I'll, I'll play my little I'll play in the mud down here while you guys are 360 no scoping through like four walls or whatever, doing some amazing stuff. Right. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, you had the whole hour available, right? Yeah, 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 I'm good. Okay. I just want to double check to make sure. Um, so, I guess... So, do you just work by yourself, or do you work with, like, an editor or anything like that? Or is it just, like, you doing everything? It's all me, baby. What you see is what you get. This ugly mug is me, all natural. <laughs> Fair. I mean, likewise for myself, but I know, like... um at least from what I consider, like, this is, like, kind of lower effort compared to, I think, what a lot of other people do. Especially, like, I, I would say yourself, because I think um, at least what you do in part requires a bit more scripting or a bit more um, editing, in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 guess, I guess the question that I always like to ask for um, people that kind of do a, more of a mix of... Uh, like content is uh wh what is the hardest part for you in terms of like content creation um like in terms of like streaming or like the longer uh video format stuff for me it's um setting up a narrative for a video so i can stream no problem i play games hang with my friends i can be involved in the conversation i love communicating so that's really easy for me but being able to sit down really, I feel like it's because I'm kind of scatterbrained, but really just being able to collect my thoughts and like go from point A to point B while delivering crucial facts is hard because I don't want to get anything wrong. So I, I like double check and triple check myself. The thing that's the hardest for me is that I don't like setting up a script for myself. So I'll put my thoughts and, and opinions out there. And sometimes I'll have to like do two or three takes to get really what I want to say down. So I'll start off pretty basic and then that take won't be good. So I'll do another take, which might be a little bit more informative, but too like dry. And then around the third or the fourth take, I really blend a little bit of personality and, and what I want to display and project. That's the hardest part because it's I try and it's hard talking to a camera. It's like a it's a skill. It's like a skill you got to develop. So I've been working on it, but I'm still limited to kind of like segments in a way. Like I got to go segment by segment. I want to be able to really free flow, but I'm not quite there yet. Right. No, I got I got I'm like a very similar way. Um yeah, I've told my listeners before, but uh, I actually kind of wanted to do like video essays because you know um, I'm a huge fan of that like whole scene. But um, I hate proofreading my own work, like you know, in writing. Um, and you know, I I would maybe do it if I if I had like more of an editor, but then you know, there's the issue of like proper compensation and things like that, and um. Yeah, it just never really panned out for me in the way that I like wanted to. But I, I luckily I found like more of I guess a niche that I also do enjoy, um, with you know interviewing people. But you know it's still like the paths we could have taken, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So do you listen to your own pods? Like once you post it, you just never touch them. Uh, sometimes I do. I, I mainly. <laughs> The thing I listen to is mainly like, oh, does the audio sound good? Because um, I'm not the best audio engineer. Like, I've never, like, really studied it. It's just what I picked up on, like, YouTube mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, and I hope I'm getting better with it. But, um, you know, it's it's always been kind of like a trial and error for me, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Uh I don't know how well you fare in terms of like audio editing or like video editing and stuff like that. 
for me, I I record it quiet, so I have to in post production. I have to turn the volume up a little bit. So for me, I think that's better in a way because I I don't know. <laughs> this is gonna sound pretty dumb, but like I haven't touched. I bought my Blue Yeti. And I haven't touched any of the settings on it since I looked up like a YouTube video on how it's supposed to be set up for like talking into it like a YouTube video in like 2017. Never touched it after that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm using uh, an XLR mic. Uh, and that was like kind of like a learning curve for me because it was the first time I ever used one. So I had to learn about like, um, you know, adjusting sources in OBS, which is what I use for recording. And things like that mm -hmm. like the my, like my very first recording i remember in um obs it was recording like as um like there's a setting that you basically have to switch for like for like mono sources mm -hmm. and so like my thing came out significantly more quiet than i wanted to i was like oh no so i eventually figured out how to fix that for me but um yeah uh i mean i i, I mean i don't know um how much expertise you would have on it, but I would actually recommend XLR mic. I've I've had like um I I've enjoyed this uh you know switching ever since. Hmm, that's what's up. I I'm looking uh around. I don't know what I wanna improve first, but I, I might I might be investing in a new computer soon, so who knows? Who oh. knows? Yeah. Congrats. Uh, hopefully this we puppy can get... has been kicking since 2016, and it's uh, it's time. It's time to evolve. Damn! <laughs> wow, that's an old ass computer. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's funny for me because I've I've upgraded recently, but uh, you know, for at least my uh, videos here, I I just like play very basic like pixel games because it keeps the file size small. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but, uh, we are getting pretty close to the hour mark, so I, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'll, I'll try and wrap it up with a few questions here. Um, I guess, uh, how would I want to word this? Um, in terms of streaming, how would I want to say this? Uh, do you find it? Because I know, like, like you said, it is kind of a skill to like talk while into a camera. But like for me, I think it's like a whole other skill to like keep up a, a conversation while like gaming. Like a lot of streamers have talked about this, like how it can be like much harder because you know either like how you play the game diminishes in terms of like your um, in terms of your skills and things like that. So I guess how do you like balance that and in terms of your streams in order to like keep an act or uh, um a captive audience for me i get a little so i'm still grinding on the stream section so i don't receive as much interaction as like a more popular individual but recently i've started to experience like yeah you get you get a couple messages start popping in you try and answer uh but sometimes either you know your game or like your friends are in there so it's it's hard to answer right away and answering right away is pretty important to that whole point of like interacting with a with a streamer and all that so i try and i got two screens so i got the game going and i try and put the chat the little like chat pop up i try and put it as close to that other screen as possible so when i see movement over there it, it catches my eye that's what i've that's my latest uh trick and it's worked for you like so far yeah i would say so like i got uh yesterday i had like a pretty long stream for me four hours whoa i know but <laughs> there was a lot of uh interaction that was going on more than usual so i found that for me at least it was uh better especially because you got people on <laughs> yeah i got i got my my friends and mayor screaming that there's a guy over here and i gotta like look all around oh Oh, crazy. Um, huh. Well, no, there's no. I guess I'm kind of like curious because, um, yeah, in terms of like the sports stuff, I, I was trying to think is there like any like sports event that you would be able to stream 
that's like public access, but I can't think of any that would mm. be. Because I don't know like when um sports broadcasting became like a big thing and I don't know if it was like post like the public domain date or anything like that. You know, I've actually it's it's really hard to post anything related to MMA. They got their entire anything. It is on lock and they say no, you cannot use this. So it's actually it's really hard to like get any like if you watch uh any sort of like MMA content besides directly from like UFC or these like promotions it's a lot of like pictures or like two second videos. It's it's crazy. So it's it's a hard balance. But in terms of like public, public, yeah, there really there's a lot of people that'll jack streams illegally. But unless you like, if you do the Sidemen uh, soccer charity match, I don't know if you you know or seen that. I, I remember. I always see this like picture pop up every now and again on Twitter. But like, it was like of a streamer that like uh, tried to stream an MMA match by pretending he was playing it or something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that always cracks me up. I mean, maybe you should try that. I don't know. People will try all sorts of all sorts of things because they're so they're it's really crazy. But other sports if you make a video about it it's fine but if you like stream something i'm sure they get on your on your ass but it's really just literally like mma like i had um i was making a video about like brutal knockouts and so i would be talking about like the you know the the stories about them and all that and if i included like i had like three seconds of like the actual knockout for one clip and they were like, nah, you can't use this. And I was like, this is crazy. Yeah, it seems so weird to me because I figured, you know, um, why, why do you think that's the case? That they're, they're that harsh on, you know, um, like streaming and stuff like that, like their content. They have an iron grip because a lot of these places will have them under their own streaming service or video catalog. So they want you to buy their monthly subscriptions that you can, sure, you can watch it. But you have to be on our dime. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I know, like, obviously being part of, like, well, not a part of, but, like, talking with a lot of people that do, like, you know, film essays and stuff like that, like, you know, it's also a very rough scene for them, too, despite, like, I think YouTube giving more deference to, like, of course, like, larger, like, critics and things like that, like, um, Cosmonaut, Variety Hour, and, you know, people like that. Mm. Um... I'm more of a YMS guy personally. Yeah, I mean, I I hear he's good. I, it's just I don't know. I, I it's um there's like too You're many good furries. content creators out there, so I, I have to like cut my losses. And he's like one where it's just like I can't keep up with his content, unfortunately. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I guess while I do have you here, and I, I apologize for not bringing this up earlier, but I just thought of it right now is um we mentioned a little while ago like you know logan paul and jake paul getting into like you know combat sports as a means of like growing their career and i remember that like um or i i think it might still be the case that like logan paul i think like has worked a lot with like wwe as like a wrestler for them and granted i i know that like it might not be your like necessarily cup of tea but um well, what's your whole take on, like, that? Because to me, I think he's, like, amazing at WWE, to be honest. Like, it feels like his calling. Like, why the hell did he get into YouTube, man? You know? I'm actually about to spill a secret. I was a super pro wrestling nerd at one point. Before I started YouTube back in 2016, like, 2016, I graduated high school. So I started doing a lot of different stuff. One of the things I wanted to do was I straight up wanted to do, like, pro wrestling school and all that type of stuff. So I'm. I was like super obsessed with him and all that stuff. Seeing Logan, I think that he's like, <laughs> I think he is a little bit of a sociopath. So I think it's perfect because I mean, he'll play that, whatever role that, that, he that, needs. That, that high up, who isn't, right? True, very, very true. But he he plays as there's certain he has the athleticism, sure. Like he's been doing backflips on Vine ten years ago, so he's got that ability. And if you know of him you hate him and if you're a kid you love him because you don't know him <laughs> so he's a draw to everybody and he has like the ability to perform like that that 
that body slam that he did with Ricochet, uh, the jumping from the, the ropes into each other, that was beautiful. <laughs> that was really beautiful. Well, um, I guess we, uh, yeah, no, it's, um, and admittedly, <laughs> Like I'm sounding like such like you know a, a simp I guess for uh, Logan Paul, but uh, you know I I I don't really like a lot of his content. But I will admit I do like Prime as a, as an uh as like a you sports drink. Very what does delicious. It taste like? And low sugar. Really? You know I don't know I like it. Are all the different colors a different flavor? Yeah, there's subtle hints of like I mean I think they start with like a base of like kind of like coconut water-esque but then they add like their own flavorings to each one like my favorite is a bomb pop like you know the like rainbow colored one kind of mm -hmm. love that shit interesting i haven't seen any um yeah i pick them up every so often at like the corner store and stuff like that i don't know if it's like more close to me because of where i live and everything and then you're shipping them over to Europe for 10 times the value. I wish, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> or like, um, I, I saw there's like, uh, what was it? A vending machine, I think in Singapore that's selling prime for like $15 a bottle. <laughs> it's crazy. Dude, it really is. It's, it, we, a YouTuber. Remember this guy was a Viner. We let this we let this happen. We really? built it from the ground up. Uh, got it. Even though you, you might not like him personally, there's something to like being able to just like remain in the public eye across multiple platforms and be one of the most like talked about people for 15 years is is crazy. <laughs> it's admirable. Admirable. Yeah, I gotta. I, yeah, I definitely gotta give him credit for. Um his whole empire and everything so to speak um but we are a little bit past the hour mark uh, and i you know obviously i could talk to you all day but um i don't want to keep you too long so i guess for everyone listening thank you so much for joining us today if you want to support the podcast you do so in a number of different ways uh, if you want to do um more of a monthly plan i have a patreon account with different tiers uh with each tier you get your name read aloud at the end of the episode here but i don't have any patrons so the section's blank right now uh i think in like the two other tiers you get like unique merch to patreon that's only available on patreon uh if you want to do one time uh donations i also have a ko-fi account because i think it's like a little bit easier to do it through them they also provide a monthly system but again i would recommend patreon for the benefits that you get there uh i also have a merch store uh i recently released a, a promo art from the great george isaac of nocturnal essent yeah i really love the design um we worked uh, really hard on that on like coming up with that well i say we but it was mostly george like he's honestly an amazing talent but um all this is available on uh the links to all these are available on my link tree on my twitter profile at podcasting pasta again that's at podcasting pasta all one word uh i think the p's are capitalized i'm not sure if it really matters uh for the time being i'll be sticking with uh twitter um maybe i'll move to threads but i'll have to like see at the very least i might like try and claim my name on there just in case you know um but up God, how did, oh my god, I'm so tired. I'm so sorry. Up Lupo? I can't, <laughs> that's not your name. And Discord will not give it to me. Um, Uptown Lupo 420, baby. Okay. Well, go ahead and shout out where people can find you. Again, I apologize for not getting your name, but it just keeps showing me you. Like, thanks, <laughs> Discord. So helpful. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel, Up. Town Lupo 420. You can find me on Twitter at some MMA dude. That's basically it. That's where I uh, that's where I exist. Haven't made the switch to Threads yet or any other social media site. Uh, I have a Twitch that's the same name, Uptown Lupo 420, but it's been it's been dead for a hot minute. If I revive it, find me there. But anywhere else, no Threads. I don't know. I gotta wait. I gotta wait and see. They just sued them. Twitter threatened to sue them. 
Yeah, yeah, so so stupid. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you all so much for joining us. And um, oh, thank you once again to Salty Llama for sponsoring the episode. Again, that's www.saltylama.com. Promo code podcast pasta. Um, all caps, I believe. Not sure it matters. Um, yeah, thank you all for listening, and uh, take care. Bye. Love you. <laughs>